Think of these words, if you will. Let all of us speak truth to our neighbors, for we are members of one another. Let all of us speak truth to our neighbors, for we are members of one another. One of the basic human skills we all learn is the skill of asking for advice. We learn from a very early age that asking for advice is essential to solving our problems. The first person who told you that there were no stupid questions was probably one of your parents, at least I hope it was, because that was meant to teach us that we should always be seeking knowledge from people who know more than we do. Asking for advice is a fundamentally social form of wisdom sharing. It's impossible for any of us to imagine where we would be today if we had never asked for advice from anybody. No teacher, no parent, no trusted friend. We are social learners, and we save ourselves a lot of grief when we ask for advice. Exactly because we are social learners, though, we ask for advice for a lot of different reasons. Sometimes we genuinely need to know something. Sometimes we're more motivated by curiosity. We want to know that thing that somebody else obviously has already figured out. Sometimes we ask for advice because we want to be seen as the sort of people who ask for advice. And sometimes we do it because we know that in our society, asking someone for advice is a way of showing respect to them. It says that you know they know something you'd like to know. Now, whether we accept the advice we get is a very different question. There are some types of advice we never intend to follow. Our grandmother telling us to calm down and go slow. Any advice that our parents give us. And of course, the problem with that is later in life, as we grow older, we look back and see just how wise that advice was. It was advice spoken from the heart out of love for us, hoping to keep us from being hurt. We don't have any way of knowing what prompted St. Paul to give the advice that he gave to us this morning. We know that in other cases, especially in that church in Corinth, when he wrote to that church, he was responding to advice they had asked for. Remember what he says now concerning the matters about which you wrote. Ephesus was different. We think Paul's experience of the church in Ephesus wasn't as deep as it was of other churches. We're not really even that sure that this letter was intended for Ephesus. We think it might have been the copy Ephesus got of a letter that actually was a circular meant for a lot of the early churches. We're a lot more sure of where Paul was when he wrote this letter. He was right here in Rome, in prison, waiting to appear before Nero. And we know that when it came to the churches that Paul had planted all around the Eastern Mediterranean, he was first, last, and always a pastor. Paul cared deeply about the people of God. So this morning, we have Paul's advice. We're not sure what the question was or who asked it or what advice they were looking for, but we know what the answer is. And the question for us is, is it the sort of advice we are willing to learn from? The worst kind of advice you get is the advice that you ask for, but don't really want to follow. The worst kind of advice we get is the advice that we know we should follow, and we know just as certainly that following it will mean not just learning something, but changing something about our lives. It's like getting advice from your doctor, getting advice to lose weight or quit smoking. You know you should exercise more, but yeah, taking that advice, well, it means making a sacrifice, making a change. Even when we say we want to, we often don't. Well, Paul is a doctor. He's a doctor of Christian souls. And he's giving us advice that we know is good for us. The question is, 
whether we're going to turn it into the worst kind of advice, the advice you get but don't want to follow. His advice is simply this. To be a Christian means to be in community. There are no Christians alone. That line that some of our friends say to us, I'm spiritual, be not religious. There are no Christians who fit that description, at least not if being religious means being a part of a committed community of faith. Because being part of a church is not optional for people who are Christian. And here's another part of his advice. When Paul talks to those people in Ephesus about neighbors, let us put away all falsehood and speak the truth to our neighbors. He's talking about the great big world of non-Christian people that we all live in. When he says we should speak the truth to all our neighbors because we are members of each other, he's telling us that this is the truth we need to tell ourselves and to them, that we are all connected in this life. We're all bound up together with each other. Our destinies are intertwined, whether we like it or not. We know that's true if only because we read and watch the news. We know our planet is in trouble, our climate is changing, and there's nothing any one of us can do to go to a safe place and leave that problem to everybody else. We know that nationalism is tearing apart everything from friendships and neighbors to the institutions we built to preserve peace and the international order. And there's no way any of us can escape the consequences of that or the responsibility to work against it. So here's the last part of Paul's advice. For us to treat each other well, for us to love each other as brothers and sisters in the church, that is not optional. That is not something we do for appearances or just to look like Christians. It is essential to who we are. It is at the core of our faith. That's true for two reasons. First, the world around us today is a lot like the world around Paul sitting in a Roman prison. It is pretty unsympathetic to the message we have to share. The world around us doesn't really believe that each human being deserves equal respect and equal dignity. The world around us doesn't really believe that love has more power to change the world for good than force does. The world around us doesn't really believe that self-denial and serving God is the way to realize the full potential of being human. So for those of us who do believe those things and try to live by them, sticking together is not optional. It's essential. And we will never be able to stick together if we don't treat each other well. There's a second reason that's so urgent for us. It's that if the world sees us treating each other poorly, it will have little reason to be interested in what it is we believe. The single most important part of our evangelism, friends, is not standing out on the street corners handing out pamphlets about St. Paul's. It's not our beautiful liturgy. It, it's sure not our sermons. No, the single most important thing that we do to share the gospel of Christ with the rest of the world is the example we give of how we treat each other. When we get that right, people outside get curious. But when we get it wrong, people give up on us. So, is this going to be the worst advice in the world for us? Or will it be advice we're willing to take? Can we make Paul's words to that long ago little church our own mission statement? Are we prepared to really ask ourselves whether all that we have, we have come by honestly? Are we willing to watch what we say and be more disciplined about not talking poorly about others when they're not around? 
Are we ready to do all we can to encourage each other, whether it's what we do in church or in the rest of our lives? Here's what Paul says this morning that is not advice. It's a fact. You were marked with a seal. You were claimed by God through the death and resurrection of Christ in baptism. And the day is coming when that seal will be looked on, looked for on each of us by the God who put it there, who loves us and is counting on us. And on that day, it will be seen what we did with our brother Paul's advice. Amen.